Today we'll make this cottage lemon sign. Keep watching. We're going to start with some ribbons, a thinner ribbon and a thicker ribbon. One is wired and this lace ribbon is not, but it's pretty stiff. We're going to have this sign, this came from Target, and this calendar, the August 2021 Simply Blessed, and it's the graphic from that. You're just going to remove that from your calendar. When I placed that down, I could still see the writing through here, so rather than dragging out the paint and having all that dry time, I just decided to go ahead and use my black furniture repair marker and cover up all of the green on this sign. It's a beautiful green, don't get me wrong, but I want to cover up the black from the writing and also this will help camouflage the grid from the numbers and the squares on the back of the calendar page. These markers are like a stain marker, but they can be used for so much more than furniture repair. I really recommend that you get them. You can get them at Dollar Tree and you can get them, they're in three packs. And I think there's two varieties of their three packs, a darker color and then the lighter colors. Okay, so all those spaces in the middle will not matter. I'm just gonna press down so I can make some marks on my paper as to where I wanna lay my sign when I am getting ready to glue it. And it looks like that, see it dries very fast. It looks like that is going to fit nicely on my page. And I'm gonna use my glue stick and just coat this down really well. Try to get a nice even layer so that there's no bumps and lumps on here. And if you do get a little lump, just rub it out with your hand and smooth it out. You're gonna flip this down on top of your calendar page. See, I got it back in the original spot, so that's good. Good thing about a glue stick is if you put it on there initially upside down, which I did do, and I had to take it off and put it back on, it very easily came away with no tearing, and then I placed it back down in the right position. You're gonna use your hands to smooth it out. You can use a wooden ruler to smooth it out as well. This is what I always do. Rather than trimming, which is definitely an option for you, I'm using my sanding block and going around the edges and sanding off all the excess of my paper. This will give you a nice, clean, finished look. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and sand it just a little bit more. I've taken the side of my sander where the paper, where the um, the sanding, the grit is a little bit uh, more fresh. So it's getting a little more bite into that paper. Pressing a little bit harder so that you can see that black edge from the black marker that I painted underneath. And I like that. I think it gives it a, a nice trim. You certainly don't have to do that. But it does add a little depth. This is some rope that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use this as a border and a hanger. I'm just getting a, an idea of how much I need here and then instead of using my scissors I used some of my pliers with a little cutting end. I cut that off with that because it's very thick. I put a clear mat underneath this so that I wouldn't damage my table and I'm using this glue. I used it initially on the sign and then on the rope to press it down. Then, because I like the look, and it was so much more easy to handle just putting it onto the rope, because you can roll that under just a little bit. You can twist like you can see me doing with my right hand to put that in the right spot so that no glue pushes up to the top. It'll go, it'll sandwich it between the rope and the edge of the sign a little bit better. Now, Dollar Tree signs are a lot thinner than these signs that you get from Target. Mine was a thrifted sign. I paid very little for it. But if you have the opportunity to get maybe some 90% off items from the, the um, Bullseye's Playground, be sure that you check that stuff out because you can get some really quality signs, more, you know, more heavy duty 
for your projects um, at a very, very cheap price. Sometimes cheaper than a thrift store and definitely it's going to be cheaper than the Dollar Tree if you do it that way. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on here, adding a little to the rope, twisting it so that it tucks it that bead of glue right underneath the edge. And if you do get a little bit that peeks out on the top, just wipe that off. You can just use your protected finger and just, you know, rub that off of there before it gets a chance to dry because you don't want it to tear your paper. And then going around right up to that edge. The top part is not going to have any glue. So you see the glue did stick down to my mat, but it peels off the mat and it doesn't damage my table. I have got some spots on my table because I have a white, it's like a, just a regular, you know, card folding type table. And then I have contact paper on top of that. Well, this will stick to the contact paper and leave rough bumps and it's hard to get all of that off. So I guess it's a good thing that there's a rustic looking background because you really don't notice it, I don't think. Okay, so now we're at the top. We have our two loose strands. With this rope, there can be some little rough spots or, you know, spots that I just don't want in my rope, and you just trim that off. So I'm going to make a simple knot here with this. You can see me roll it over and just tuck both the ends into the knot so that I have a little bit hanging out. Then you're just going to pull it some. See how tight this is and how well this holds? It could definitely hold a lot more weight than the weight of that little bitty sign. It gives it a nice rustic look too. So then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree ribbon. Very pretty ribbon. At one point they had run out and I was just devastated. So I did find another store that had restocked it. So maybe this is a, a spring and summer type ribbon. Just going to make a simple little bow there as you saw. I'm using it a little clamp in the center to hold it until I get the next layer ready. And I'm just measuring to see how big I want the loops of my bow to be. And then this is a simple bow. You're just going to wrap it around and around and around so that you have three loops on one side, three loops on the other side. No twisting required for this bow. Just go around and around and loop. And once you get what you need, go ahead and trim that off. Don't worry about your tails yet. And this is what our pretty little bow is going to look like. So we're going to add that right on top. Grab a little bit of floral wire or whatever you have to secure it with. Twist it tightly together. And once it's twisted tightly, don't clip off that wire yet because we're going to use that. <clears throat> okay, so then you're going to kind of get an idea. This is me looking to see, okay, the, the loops of the bow are the right size. It's how I want them. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off by dovetailing the ends of this ribbon. And I did leave one side longer than the other, which honestly I didn't notice until I was editing the video. But I'm, I'm not bothered by that. You know, in a cottage style, a farmhouse, rustic type look, it's, it's fine. You know, you're not going to notice or point that out. Well, I hope nobody comes in my house and dares to point out my mistakes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I'm from the South and we don't play that. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece here. Make sure that my wires are one on each side. And I'm going to add down some glue. Careful not to burn yourself. Gonna just kind of measure here to see how much I need just to cover the back so that the little ends don't show. We want all the messiness on the back. You won't be able to see it. So I glued down now. Just gonna hold it in place. And then flip it over and fluff it out. Okay, so now here's where you put the wires. I'm going underneath the knot and around it. So right where they meet, right where the two ropes meet underneath the knot is where you want to put it and twist it very tightly so that it doesn't slide around. You can fluff out your bow for the final time. I do this through the entire process. Trim up anything that needs to be trimmed, move anything around that needs to be moved around. 
and then you have your perfect little simple easy to make sign. To me, I'm getting all the cottage feels, the springtime rustic farmhouse feels, and I just love it. Lemons are fresh, the yellow is bright and cheerful, and this is going to be living in my kitchen this spring and summer season. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to my subscribers. We are now over 505. Thank you so much for watching, and come back to see me soon. Bye!